we are going to be talking about inner critic. What do I mean when I say inner critic? Um, you know, um, sometimes you find yourself in an inner dialogue with yourself in which you are being very harsh and critical towards yourself. You punish yourself. You don't like yourself very much and go through some very difficult emotions. Um, in transactional analysis, uh, this part of the psyche is called inner parent or critical inner parent, to be more exact, because parent can be nurturing or critical. So sometimes you find yourself having this inner conflict, inner fight with yourself. And the reason it is called parent or critical parent is because this voice that you hear within yourself uh, or the way you talk to yourself is sometimes very, very similar to the way your parents talk to you when you were a kid. So you find yourself in those kind of situations where you catch yourself talking to yourself like your mom did or your dad did or anybody who raised you. So um, what it does is it targets your self-esteem and um, it causes a lot of anxiety and depression. So it's very important to address that. And usually in therapy, we do so. But here, I would like to uh, raise your awareness about the mechanics of um, this part of the psyche a little bit more. So um, before we talk about the ways and methods of disarming the inner critic, I would like to talk about the reasons why we hold on to it. Because even if we consciously uh, come to the realization that um, we are suffering because of it, that's not um, enough to let go of it. Because in some um, unconscious way, we might be resisting and holding on to it because we feel that it is serving a purpose or it is helping us in some way. Um, when uh, I talk to some people in the therapy room, some people feel that um, the inner critic helps them do the right thing. It's like they feel if they don't have this critical voice inside them, they will end up doing the wrong thing. So we need to slow down here a little bit and think more carefully about our past. Did you always do the right thing because you were afraid? Because you were afraid of this critical voice within you? Or did you do good deeds because you felt good about yourself as a result of doing them? Or um, do you feel that you did something because it was aligned with your values? You know, the value system is very important here, as I talked about in the past before. So it's important to reassess your value system and see uh, what you want to keep and what, what you want to let go, because some of our values are not really genuine values or they are not flexible. You know, healthy values are realistic. They are flexible and they motivate you to do the right thing. So you don't necessarily need a critical, harsh voice to do the right thing. Another uh, very common reason is um, some people say, well, my critic uh, helps me uh, feel that I am a good person. Um, one very common thing that the inner critic does is uh, comparing, comparing you constantly, comparing you with other people. And when you compare yourself with others, Sometimes you feel good because you feel you are better than them. And many times you find yourself feeling bad because you feel you are worse than them or less than them. So um, a healthier way is to let go of the comparison and have self-compassion. Self-compassion is really the key to feel good about yourself, not using the um, uh, inner critic. Let me explain more about self-compassion. When I say self-compassion, I'm talking about creating a space for understanding yourself. That understanding is the key. Well, if I wanna give you an example, um, it's like, for example, you are overeating and you do it on a regular basis and you feel bad about yourself, but you never take the time to think why you do it. Well, the reason you do it is 
can be different for different people. Uh, you might do it because you are tired when you come home after work, or you might do it simply because you feel an emotional void within you that you need to fill, or any other reason. But understanding that reason is very important. So you, when you understand yourself, you try to accept yourself without judging yourself, forgive yourself. And usually as a result of this process of, of being more compassionate, being more accepting towards yourself, you find better ways to deal with problematic behavior or um, any other thing that you're suffering from. You can uh, deal with your weaknesses better this way. Well, another reason is um, some people say my critic helps me reach my goals. In some level, it is true. It is true. People who are more perfectionistic, people who push themselves all the time, beat, this, beat themselves up and try to achieve more and more. Well, the outer reality is that in many cases, they are more successful. But are they really happy? Sometimes uh, we use this critical voice to push ourselves further in life. But the price we pay for that is our happiness. So as a result, we are not very uh, happy. Um, in order to deal with, uh, one very helpful way is to let go of the belief that your worth is dependent on what you do or your success or your achievements. Find goals that motivate you. Find goals that are yours. Sometimes in life, we have goals that we pursue and we achieve, but they are not really our goals or they don't really make us happy when we achieve them. Sometimes they are our parents' goals. Sometimes uh, they are goals uh, imposed to us by the society or um, other people. So... Um, it's, it feels really good to have a goal that you feel is yours and makes you feel good about yourself and motivates you. So that motivation is more intrinsic and more genuine. Um, another reason is some people say, I need the critic to help me control my negative feelings. Um, there are some different negative feelings here involved. One of those negative feelings is feeling of worthlessness. Uh, well, sometimes in an unconscious way, you create this ideal self for yourself and you push yourself to reach that ideal self. Where you are right now, you don't feel worthy. You don't feel good about yourself. But you, f you create this fantasy that if you reach that ideal self, one day you will feel worthy and you feel good about yourself in the end. Well... From experience, we all know that that day never comes. Well, um, if you don't feel good about yourself now in the present, it's very unlikely that um, as a result of achieving something in the future, you, you feel good about yourself. So um, to the, day, the, the way to um, deal with this uh, again is self-compassion and having more understanding for who you are, where you come from and what you really want. Another emotion that we try to mask with the inner critic is fear of failure or rejection. Um, this has a kind of protective uh, purpose to it. It's like you feel that your critic stops you from failing or stops you from taking risks. It keeps you safe. A good example for this is people who are afraid of social situations, afraid of approaching other people and talking to them because they're afraid they might look like an idiot or pe other people might not uh, like them. This is, this, this, is, this is what the inner critic, it is the inner voice that is telling them. Um, and when, when we say voice, we don't mean an actual voice. Uh, it's like the inner dialogue that you're having uh, with yourself. Because if it is an actual voice, then th that's another story. Um, so um, 
in this case, the inner critic is, cap is keep feeling, um, keeping you safe, helps you feel safer, but at the same time, it stops you from meeting your needs for connection with other people. So it's not helping you to feel happier. In this case, you need to redefine the meaning of failure for yourself and come to terms with the fact that even if you are rejected by other people, it doesn't mean that uh, you are a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're an idiot. It means that you are courageous. You did your best. You tried. Another uh, emotion that uh, is often masked by the um, inner critic is um, anger. This is a very interesting one because sometimes in life when uh, we are angry at our loved ones, especially people who are really important to us, people who we depend on for our survival, if we have huge resentments toward them or anger towards them, it's very frightening and threatening in a very unconscious way. So we take that anger again in an unconscious manner and turn it towards ourselves. It's easier to blame yourself and feel angry at yourself than feeling angry at your loved ones. A clear example for this is children who blame themselves because their parents' uh, relationship doesn't work or because their parents are getting divorced. They feel that they are to blame or there's something wrong that they did. So... Here, self-criticism is a defense and protection, but uh, ultimately it creates a lot of unhappiness. Uh, but when this comes to your consciousness, when you become aware that this anger originally is directed towards someone else, it can relieve um, huge amounts of energy and help you feel calmer and more relaxed and helps you find better ways to deal with your relationships. Well, um, here we need to take a break, so I'll be back uh, with you soon. Hi, welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4450. A lot of time, we don't even know what's wrong with us, and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. We're back again. So we were talking about the emotions that are related to the inner critic. The next very important emotion that we need to address is uh, feeling guilty and feeling ashamed. Well, Guilt and shame are quite similar feelings, but it's good to differentiate between them here. Um, shame is um, to do with you feeling that you are innately a bad person, like you feel that you are not a good person, you feel ashamed of yourself. It's, it's to do with, the, with your view of yourself. Whereas guilt uh, is about what you did. It's like you, you did something wrong. It's about the, the, your action being wrong. So um, shame is a very destructive feeling and it's a very powerful one and a difficult emotion to work with. So if you have a lot of shame inside you, it's very good that you get professional help. But guilt is not always a destructive feeling. It, it, it can be very constructive actually because when we hurt someone, uh, if we feel guilty, we take steps to um, make up. We take steps to compensate for what we did. And that's actually very helpful to deal with the feeling of guilt. So if you hurt somebody, you could apologize to them. And if you don't have any access to that person, there are other good deeds that you could do 
mm, you could help other people who remind you of those people or people who are related to people you hurt. That could help you deal with the feeling of uh, guilt. But um, the excuse of the inner critic to hold on to these feelings of guilt and shame is that if you feel uh, more guilty, you hurt other people less. So you need to hold on to this feeling and deal with it and you punish yourself kind of mentally to stop yourself from going forward and um, hurting other people or you, it's kind of telling you that you will feel less shame and less guilt if you hold on to uh, this negative dialogue that you're having. Uh, so again the self-compassion is the, the best way to deal with the shame. So another difficult feeling is feeling disappointed. When you don't get what you want, you feel disappointed. disappointed. And uh, you might feel angry, anxious, and then turn that anger to yourself and start blaming yourself. In some unconscious level, it's like you're feeling that if I um, criticize myself, if I blame myself for being disappointed, I will be less disappointed in the future. I can protect myself uh, from being disappointed in the future. The best way to deal with it is to accept that disappointment is a very common and natural feeling and all of us have to deal with it in our lives. Accepting the fact that, the fact that everything is not supposed to go according to our plans um, and it, it, this this kind of point point of view, this acceptance, um, the genuine acceptance, can set you free, really. So, so I think by now it's pretty um, obvious why we need to disarm the critic, why why we don't want to hold on to the critic. It causes uh, a lot of uh, bad feelings. Um, your self-esteem, uh, your self-worth, you know, all these um, are reasons that we need to find ways to deal with this. So how to trap the inner critic? How do you trap the inner critic? Um, be aware of your inner dialogue in the following situations. When you meet with strangers, be aware of what is going on within you, what emotions, what kind of dialogues um, are going on. When you meet with those who you find physically attractive, that is another one. When you uh, make a mistake, be aware of your inner dialogue and what's happening inside you. When you are being criticized by others or you are criticizing other people, be aware of that. And you are being this defensive, kind of. When you are in contact with authority figures, be aware of your inner dialogue. When you feel hurt or someone feels hurt by you. When there is a chance of failure, be aware of the inner dialogue. When you talk to your uh, parents, uh, argue with uh, people who might not be very accept accepting of you, uh, it's not that your parents are, are always not accepting of you. Any, anybody who you think might not be very welcoming or accepting towards you. So this could be helpful. Another helpful way is to, to trap the inner critic is to uh, make a chart um, with three columns. Uh, one is the thought that comes to your head and the second is a feeling that you mm, have as a result of that thought. And the third column you can write the purpose of this inner critic, the purpose of this criticizing voice. For example, the purpose might be it pushes you to do the right thing or the things that we, we talked about earlier, like it compares you with other people so from time to time you feel good about yourself or it pushes you to reach your goals or uh, it's trying to help you feel res uh, less rejected. Um, these are all examples for the purpose of the inner critic. So how to disarm the inner critic? Um, 
There are different ways to disarm the inner critic, uh, to help yourself. Um, one of the best ways is to work with a therapist. When you want to choose a therapist, it's important that you feel your therapist provides a warm and welcoming space for you to talk about your most inner thoughts and feelings things that you're ashamed of, things that are very hard for you to communicate to people generally in life. You should be able to talk to your, tell your therapist. And it's so the relationship with your therapist is very important. Uh, choose a therapist who can provide that for you, a therapist who is warm, who is kind, and kind of um, contracts that um, negativity. Another way is to meditate. Meditation can help because in meditation you are observing your thoughts and you are observing your inner dialogues without judging them, without being taken over by them. It helps you um, center yourself and notice those thoughts, not to go with them, just observe them, watch them. Um, another way is to decide to tell yourself a mantra whenever you catch yourself uh, being critical to yourself. You can say something as simple as like stop or anything else that you come up with and you feel comfortable with. Some people use uh, elastic bands and um, like pull the band and uh, uh, let it go whenever they feel the negativity inside their head and they're being critical to themselves. That's, that's another way. Another very helpful way is to make a list of uh, all the price that your inner critic is making you pay. Um, when, you, when you list all the things uh, that uh, you think you, f you find bad about the inner critic, um, you get more motivated to do these exercises. And last but not least is to be kind uh, to yourself and acknowledge that your worth is not dependent on your achievements and your um, what others think of you. You know, what others think of you or what you achieve in life doesn't define who you are and how worthy you are. You are worthy because you exist. Just for the simple fact that you exist, you're worthy. And you are lovable. You know, this is a very important fact to absorb. That helps a lot. So, like, uh, like a baby, you know, like a baby that doesn't need any reason to be loved. As soon as you see a baby, you just love them. They are adorable. Just because they exist. Or because like the way you like um, flowers, like the way you treat nature, that's the way you need to treat yourself and view yourself to be able to get rid of these uh, negativity inside you. In the future, I'm going to talk more about um, ways of being more compassionate toward yourself and he healing the inner child. Uh, so um, I look forward to see you more in the future and uh, if you have any comments questions uh, i would like to know um, and thank you very much for your attention see you in the future take care mm -hmm.